Sure, go. Okay, good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to St. George. Um, This is where you look up and go, that's not Ram. That's that's not Ram. Uh, Father Ram is on a well-earned vacation. I'm actually not sure physically where he is, um, but I imagine he's, he's doing good. And, uh, and the bad news for you all is that you get the junior varsity uh, this week uh, while, while Ram is away. Um, so St. George, if I haven't met you either physically or those of you in Facebook land, St. George is actually my home church. Um, I have two sons who are graduates of St. George School and my usual seat when I am able to be here for worship is right back over there. Um, normally I am kind of the utility infielder of the diocese. I go where the bishop needs me, uh, which most often is St. Andrew's Church in Brackettville, uh, which is about 40 miles west of Uvalde, and I'm here when I can be. Um, and I, I admit that I'm vamping a little bit because we're late in getting ready and the acolytes are <laughs> heading to the back. Um, so clearly I'm not Ram and uh, I want to remind you of something and that is that it will not grieve the Holy Spirit nor will it grieve me if at some point during the liturgy uh, I like do it a different way than usual and somebody goes, dude, over there, <laughs> right? That, 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 that will not offend God at all. Okay, we look ready to go. Um, Would you stand, please, for our opening hymn? And let's be about the worship of Almighty God. song 
Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. From you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. During the singing of the song of praise, the children may exit to Children's Chapel. We see the hand of God in the light of creation's grand design, in the lives of those who prove his faithfulness. We walk by faith and not by sight. By faith, our fathers roam the earth. With the power of his promise in their hearts Of a holy city built by God's own hand A place where peace and justice reign We will stand as children of the promise We will fix our eyes on him, our soul We will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on Him, our soul's reward. Till the race is finished and the work is done. We'll walk by faith and not by sight. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Scripture.
A reading from Proverbs. Does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, to you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above when he established the fountains from the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 8. Follow it along on the screen. We will read the psalm in unison. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but a little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the feet, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. A reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character. And character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Let's stand and sing our sequence hymn, hymn 400, All Creatures of Our God and King. We're going to do verses 1, 2, 3, and 7.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Have a seat, please. It was a hot, sticky summer afternoon in Houston in 1987. And on this particular hot, sticky afternoon, I was playing third base for the Sugarland Express. Sugarland was the town I went to high school in. If I have to call a place home, that's where I'm from. It used to be a little town. What I say is I can't go home anymore because, you know, the town isn't there anymore. Anyway, we were called the Express because there is a train that runs through Sugarland called the Sugarland Express. And uh, there's a movie that features the train and actually shows shots of what my old hometown used to look like uh, way back in the day. The sugar mill is still standing. Anyway, the Express were a Babe Ruth level ball team, meaning um, high school age players who were not good enough to make the high school roster. Supplemented with a couple of us, uh, including me, who had played on the junior varsity that year and had not gotten a whole lot of playing time and were hoping to get some extra reps in in hopes of making the varsity the next year. So you, you have the level of play somewhere in your mind. We wore ugly gray shirts. You remember those letters you ironed on with, right? And, 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 a, and a trucker hat with an E on it. Like, I mean, that was whatever color baseball pants you could come up with, whatever color socks and belt you wanted to wear, that's what we wore. Anyway, on this particular day, on the moment I'm thinking about, uh, we were probably well behind in the game because that happened a lot to the Express. 
And there were runners on first and second base with nobody out. Again, typical express situation. And the kid on the mound was a kid named Greg, who was, of course, the coach's son and had the, he was a left-hander and he had, I think, the slowest delivery to the plate uh, in the history of Babe Ruth baseball. <laughs> anyway, on this particular play, Greg goes into the stretch and as he starts his gyrations toward home, both runners take off running to steal. Again, double steals were common against the Express. <laughs> well, on this particular pitch, the batter swung and hit a, a scorching ground ball right at me. Uh, and I managed to field it, which was not a foregone conclusion, and took two steps to the right and stepped on third base and gunned the ball across the diamond as hard as I could possibly throw. It whistled past Greg's ear, who was, of course, not paying attention. And... <laughs> and plunked into the glove of the first baseman just half a step ahead of the runner coming from the plate. Kid on first base, I don't remember his name. I've been trying to think of it for, I don't know, a couple of weeks now, and I just can't remember. But he was sort of the stereotypical, jovial, chubby, non-athletic kid that we put at first base. Like, he, he couldn't play very well, but he always had a great attitude and this great big smile and an infectious laugh. Anyway... This kid catches the ball and starts jumping up and down, you know, because I think it was the only double play we had turned at that point in, in the entire season. And what he missed in his exuberance is what I saw from my perspective at third, which is the runner that had started at first had rounded second and was coming for third. Well, I managed to yell and get the guy's attention, and he hauls off and heaves it back across the diamond in the general direction of third base. A beautiful rainbow arc of a throw. <laughs> and my memory of this play is frozen in my mind. I'm, I'm, I'm looking and I'm seeing the runner churning toward me, and the ball is floating toward me like <laughs> an errant helium balloon, you know. Please hurry up and get here. Well, I snatched it out of the air and put the tag on, looked around for the umpire, who was, of course, out of position, because why should anything go right on this play? And the umpire rewarded me with a really rather enthusiastic punch out. I slung the ball toward the mound and took off to the dugout. And when I turned around, I realized that only the umpire and I realized what had just happened, because everybody else was standing there uh, at their positions. In retrospect, I wish I'd kept the ball. In all my years of playing, that was the only time that ever happened. The early church had a problem. And it started with Jesus. Jesus, you see, was Jewish, and all of the original disciples were Jewish. And all of the people that he talks to, the vast majority of the people that he talked to were Jewish. And the single greatest contribution that uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the author, uh, How the Jews Saved Civilization, How the Irish Saved Civilization, and gifts of the Jews, Thomas Cahill. Thomas Cahill argues that the greatest single contribution of Judaism to human history is the concept of ethical monotheism. The fact that there really is only one God. There are not many gods of many different aspects of creation, or worse yet, many gods of different types of people and places, and my God can beat up your God, and that's why you're slaves and I'm not, right? But no, there really is only one God, and the ethical part is that the single biggest thing that God asks of the people that God has created is ethical behavior, beginning with the Ten Commandments. So Jesus, the good and faithful Jew, taught his disciples and taught everyone else that there is only one God, and we tend to call that God Father because when 
the disciples asked Jesus, teach us to pray, he taught the disciples a prayer that you and I, my brothers and sisters, are going to say together later, right about at the time of the breaking of the bread. And it starts with our Father who art in heaven, right? So there is only one God. But then Jesus rose from the dead. And we looked back at the things that he had done in his life. He had raised the dead. He had cured the blind and the lame. He had forgiven sins. Jesus of Nazareth had done things that only God is allowed to do. Jesus of Nazareth had said things that only God is allowed to say. Now, we are good Jews. There is only one God. But you know the saying, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck? <laughs> okay, what do we do with that? But then it got more complicated because a few weeks Short weeks after the resurrection later, the Holy Spirit descends upon the disciples with tongues of fire. And they begin to go out and they begin to do things that walk and talk and quack, you know. Uh, and, and they remembered the time that Jesus came and breathed on them. And when he breathed on them, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, something only God can do. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Oh man, now there's three of them. What are we going to do with that? It wasn't until... 300 years later at the Council of Nicaea that the church developed its earliest creedal statements. Now today is Trinity Sunday. It's when we are supposed to talk about and think about the nature of God. Good luck with that, by the way, to a certain extent. We're supposed to think about God's being and we see God as father we see God in Jesus inexplicably we see the Holy Spirit of God at work in the midst of us but if you go looking through your Bibles that are in the pews right in front of you you will not find the word Trinity in any of the 66 books of the Bible it is an extra biblical concept. And so when we are trying to describe the nature of God, we use analogies. And lots of analogies are used on this particular day. I'm sure you have your favorites, like the shamrock with which Patrick uh, evangelized the Irish, the, the one plant with the three leaves, right? Or uh, the concept of H2O, which in, uh, the, in, in the world can be viewed as solid ice, can be drunk as water, and can be seen as steam. It's the same thing, it's just in three forms. Or if I can be slightly more nerdy and academic, we are a school and church after all, right? It's, it's, it's three atoms that come together to form one molecule without which life on earth would not exist, right? Um, or for the musicians, a chord made up of three notes. Uh, all of these stretch in the direction of trying to describe the nature of God. Well, let me offer you another analogy this morning. The nature of God is play. Or specifically from the story I started with, the triple play. One play, three outs. Get it? <laughs> see, see, even better, even even better would be the unassisted triple play in which. Well, anyway, 
So the nature of God is three persons in relationship with each other. A relationship of constant interaction, of constant love given one to the other, of constant joy that is fed from one to the other and spills out into all of creation. The early church fathers, it was Gregory of Nazianzus, a fourth century theologian and bishop, who described this relationship as a circular dance, a, uh, a collection of three people that constantly moves in and around and through weaving in each other. And I like Bishop Gregory's analogy as well as any other, but when I think of three people moving in concert, I think of play. So God is play. Here's how. God does not need humanity for God to be complete. God is complete in God's own self. But out of love, God chooses to create and chooses to love. In the creation story, the, the, the ancient Hebrew poets sang, we are hearing echoes of it in the psalm that we read together this morning and in the offertory that we're going to hear a little later. God speaks the universe into creation out of nothing. God says, let there be light and there is light. Let there be sky and there is sky. Let there be creepy crawly things and there are creepy crawly things and, and all of creation comes to be. But, but creation is not complete until the seventh day. Six days God labors putting order, if, if one can call creation ordered at all. God creates all of these things. And then on the seventh day takes one extra, unnecessary, egregious day just to enjoy creation in all of its runny, squawky, loud, playful exuberance. Then creation is complete. And since God does not need us to be complete, that that means that by corollary, we are, from a certain perspective, unnecessary, you and me. Or to quote Rowan Williams, the most recent Archbishop of Canterbury, we are not that serious. But we are loved into being. We are created by love and for love. Out of God's will, we are created to love God and to love each other. Unnecessary, perhaps, but meaningful. We are unnecessary, but meaningful. Games, by nature, are necessary, but meaningful. They have no purpose outside themselves. Think about this for a second. Uh, the, the fancy word for my doctoral studies is games are autotelic. From auto own telos being, they have their own purpose. They are uh, a radically non-productive event. Think about a sporting event in which time and energy and effort Sometimes great amounts of all of those are expended for no particular purpose. And at the end, nothing has been created and nothing has been destroyed. And all that exists is the memory of those who would keep such arcane statistics like batting average. When the game is over, the game is done and it has fulfilled its purpose. And I would argue that its purpose is joy. And so are you and I, my brothers and sisters. We are created by love and for love. And the purpose of our creation is for joy. 
if we are invited through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to participate in the life of the Trinity, when Jesus breathes on the disciples and says to them, receive the Holy Spirit, when in a more modern context, a brother or sister in Christ or maybe a bishop lays hands on us and asks for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are invited to participate in God's own life. And one of the ways in which we do that is we mimic the way that God loves. And we play. We spend time enjoying God's creation and enjoying each other for no other purpose than to be and to love and to experience joy. And just to take a step beyond that, if you think about it, sport is, you, you know, Episcopalians will get this. Sport is the liturgy of play in which there are boundaries marked out by chalk lines and we dress up. Uh, usually when we're playing sport, we dress up in garish colors to determine one side from the other. And there are a set of rules during, you know, during the game, we follow them, but after the game, we do not. It, in a way, it's just like church. <laughs> right? Think about that when you're watching your next baseball game. The New York Yankees are just doing liturgy. Right? That's, that's all they're doing. If we are invited into the Trinity, then maybe... Maybe that when we are able to stop working and play, when we are able to interact with another person that we love, when we are able to create nothing but joy, then we are being most the image of God that God has created us to be. Now stand with me and together let us proclaim the faith of the church in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty. Almighty. Prayers of the People, Form 3. You can find in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic, Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop. David and Rayford, our bishops, Ram and Judy, our priest, 
and all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to all the departed eternal rest. And that light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For those on our prayer list, Gus and wife, Nancy, Robbie, Summer, Clay, Nan, Margie, Zoe, Efren, Carmelina, Bill, Ellen, Sila, Heidi, Tony, Chris and Kelly, George, Vitaly, Alla, Roman, Jimmy, Juanita and family, Gary, Robelia, Glenn, Ron and Joyce, Liz, Carol, Scott, Emma, Victoria, Gail and John, Margaret, Rudd, Mary Ann, Alex, Clary Lynn, and those we now name. For those having birthdays, Patricia Garza, Yuli Gomez, Jackson War, John Elder, Becca Stokes, Alice Tolling. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all to, who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with signs of God's peace. Peace be with Okay, I've been instructed to stand here while doing announcements. So, so you all can see me in Facebook land. Thank you. Um, okay, so welcome to St. George. If you're brand new here, um, one of the things you might notice because of my very thick glasses is I can't see your faces clearly on the back of the room. Uh, so if you're new, uh, please come introduce yourself. There's also welcome cards in the pews that you can either scan with a QR code or fill out and give to us. Uh, Father Ram is on vacation for June and July. Church, church office summer hours are 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and staff will be rota rotating their vacations through the summer. So uh, as I've always said uh, when I was on staff at a parish over the summer, probably a good idea to call ahead and make sure the person you want to see is here uh, before, you, before you come. Um, as a pastoral care note, uh, Reverend Judy and me and the Community of Hope chaplains uh, are covering uh, in Father Ram's absence. So uh, call the church office and speak to Kristen Moen. Uh, you were here earlier, there you were. Uh, and we'll make sure that your need is communicated properly for follow-up. Uh, there is a Bible study of Philippians starting June 19th at 9 a.m. 
before the service. It's, it says here on the announcement, it's for any Gen Xers or elder millennials. <laughs> okay. If you want to read Philippians, show up. We'll call you one of those. Um, okay, and please check our East Beer for uh, upcoming announcements. Okay, before we move on to Eucharist, is there anything else for the good of God's people? That's it? Oh, kids? We have kids? What? Do the offertory and then we'll have kids. Okay. Jesus said, for the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. Oh, my God. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you who are the beloved people of God. Come forward, beloved ones. Behold what you are. Become what you receive, the body of Christ. Say this prayer with me for those of us joining us remotely. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly pleasant in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. 
as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray.
almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who enlightened the minds of the disciples by pouring out upon them the Holy Spirit, make you rich with his blessing, that you, that you may abound more and more in that spirit forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested upon the heads of the disciples, burn out all evil from your hearts and make them shine with the pure light of his presence. Amen. Amen. May God, who by the Holy Spirit caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to him in word and deed. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And now let's stand and sing our recessional hymn, hymn 362, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.